Once upon a time, in a village far, far away, the elderly owner of the local flour mill became ill, and after a short while, he died. Unfortunately for his three sons, the miller's business had not been doing well, and he left behind a very small inheritance. In fact, his total estate amounted to just three items, and these he willed to his sons according to their ages. The eldest son received the mill itself. The second oldest boy was given a hard-working donkey. And the youngest son, Max, was left the family cat. What? That is correct. I'm afraid that's all your father was able to pass on to you. You mean I am to be left without a penny to my name? It would seem so. The language of your father's will is quite specific. I leave to my youngest son our beloved Tomcat, who has distinguished himself in his single-minded pursuit and capture of mice. Better than nothing. You might as well give up. I'm bound to catch you sooner or later. <laughs> How am I supposed to make a living? I see. You think you can escape me, do you? It appears as though your inheritance is living up to his reputation most enthusiastically. Stop making so much noise! <laughs> if you value your hide, Master Cat, you'd better stop it! <laughs> Good morning, young squire. Have you suffered some kind of misfortune? You appear to be very pale. Aha! Uh -huh, I'll wager you've been fighting with your big brothers again, haven't you? And by the look of things, you've been beaten again. <laughs> I'm afraid your temper is more spirited than your judgment. Now look here. Don't provoke me any further. I'm in no mood to be mocked by the likes of you. I beg your pardon. Am I somehow the cause of your foul mood? More than you can imagine. The terms of my father's will were made known today. And my inheritance is you. Just me? Yes. My brothers received everything of any value. Don't despair. Your father was a man of uncommon wisdom. How so? Because he left me to be cared for by the one person in this household who has shown me any affection. And that is you. Uh, nice of him. He must have determined that you, among all his sons, were the one who could benefit most from my companionship and faithful devotion. You should be truly grateful for his bounty. Ugh, some kind of bounty. How am I supposed to earn my living with nothing but a tomcat? You must start by counting your blessings. In my circumstance, I have much to be grateful for. If I had been left to either of your brothers, I would have been kicked around all year, and in the end, they would have used my fur to make gloves. Hmm. That might be a good idea. I expect a glove maker would pay quite a pretty penny for a fur pelt. It's thick enough. Would you please stop contemplating such an unpleasant prospect? Can you see nothing at all beyond your pocketbook? Why are you so possessed by this desire to make money? Isn't it obvious? My two older brothers have been given a way to make a living, but I'm forced to fend for myself with no means whatsoever. And you've been left with one shabby tabby, on top of which you know nothing about the world yet, unlike your brothers. Also, because you're a youngster, you have no strength. And as for your brain, well, we can't expect much there either. What? Perfectly understandable. The answer to your problems can be found in the village. <laughs> I must say, I find you humans to be quite confusing. It seems that you cannot enjoy life unless you hear the sound of gold and silver coins rattling around in your pockets. It's regrettable. If you were like cats, you'd find the world much more interesting, and you'd be content to while away your days doing nothing more ambitious than chasing mice. We're really quite a wonderful species, independent, lovable, and fascinated with the world we find around us. How about it, my friend? Give up this troublesome quest to accumulate money and try to be more like me. You'll never get bored, and I can assure you, you'll be much happier than your brothers. Life's not as simple as you seem to think it is. Life can be as simple or as complicated as you wish to make it. If you were to follow my example, you would soon discover that nothing on Earth is as satisfying as playing with mice, or that feeling you get at the end of the chase when you get to gobble them down. Ah! Believe me when I tell you, humans find such pursuits unappetizing. Ah, here is the shop I was looking for. This is the shop of the shoemaker. Are you suggesting that I might find employment here? Not at all. In that case, I'm confused. For what purpose did you bring me to this shop? Surely you do not expect me to buy a new pair of shoes with what little remains out of my meager capital. I presume from what you just said that you have enough money to buy one pair of shoes if need be? Such a purchase would leave me absolutely penniless. Stop now, I won't be a party to something so absurd. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm sorry to interrupt you. What can I do for you? I'm hoping you can fashion a pair of shoes for me. I'm in a big hurry. Have you gone completely mad? I told you I can't afford new shoes. Please don't interfere. 
So, Master Shoemaker, are you able to do the job or not? Hmm. Do you have any money? As you probably noticed, I have no personal means of my own, but my master has more than enough money to make such a purchase. Isn't that right, sir? We better go. I don't think this gentleman will be amused with your little joke. But my request is not intended to provoke laughter. Just a minute, you two. I'm a busy man, and if you're here to waste my time, I'm warning you right now, you'd better get out or I'll make you regret having come here in the first place. See how much trouble you caused by not listening to me, sir? Now you've gotten the shoemaker very upset. Ow! You'd better let him see. Let him see what? The money, of course. If you get him any angrier, things will get out of hand. You'd better show him you have some. Mm. Mm. He has plenty of money, as you can see. What do you think, shoemaker? How many pairs of shoes could we purchase with the money you see before you? Well, for that much, I could make you one pair. One pair of adult shoes, am I right? Yes, that's correct. I suppose, then, that if you were to make shoes for me, you would use less material and would probably have some left over? You mean the shoes you want made are for you? That's my idea. And what does that mean? It means rather than making large, expensive shoes for a human, it is far more economical to think in terms of making small shoes for me. Is it possible, Shoemaker, that with this sum, you might be able to fashion me some kind of hat as well? Well, if they're for you, then I suppose both the shoes and the hat could be done. Agreed. Since time is of the essence, do you mind beginning work immediately? I think I'll have you make me boots instead of shoes, though. That would look more dashing. I want them to reach my thighs and have some stylish embroidery around the top. They should be very soft leather. I want them to be red, and the heels should be nice and high. Oh, and let's put some spurs on them as well. You never know when I might have to ride a horse. I'm doomed. I would pinch myself, but I'm afraid I would find out this was no dream. Well, what is your opinion? Does it meet with your approval? I must say it's impressive. You're fabulous. <laughs> your appearance is beyond words. Never in my life have I seen such elegance before. Thank you for your praise, sir. I've been noticing in my observations of people that they seem to be very impressed with a person's outward appearance. In fact, someone may be an absolute scallywag, but if he dresses well, he will be immediately accepted by members of polite society. You seem to have a more dignified manner about you, almost as though you've become a new person. To be more precise, you'd have to say I've become a new cat. You certainly don't look like the pet cat from the flour mill. It's a pity I'm broke. With a bit more money, I might have been able to complete your wardrobe by buying you a splendid cake. You've already been most kind to me, my friend. Here you've spent all your money, and yet without a moment's hesitation, you offer to buy me a cloak. You're very generous. As impressive as your bearing is now, I believe a cloak would convince people you serve some great nobleman. You may be right, but the items you've already purchased should be sufficient for my purposes. Come along, sir. Huh? Innkeeper? Yes, can I help you? I'm a bit hungry. Could you possibly prepare a meal for me? Yes, I'd be honored. Meat dishes, fish dishes, or anything else you'd prefer. I'll let you pick the menu. What mischief are you up to? Nothing. I'm simply planning to have a meal. Make that a meal for two, my good man, and serve up the best food your establishment has to offer. Immediately. It would be my pleasure. This is beyond comprehension. Have you gone mad? I'm feeling perfectly fit, thank you. Why? Because you seem to have forgotten that we have no money. We're completely destitute. I'm well aware of that. This man will expect to be paid for the food he's preparing. I imagine so. It's a reasonable expectation. So what do you plan to do? Eat and run? Why, that would be dishonorable. I'm surprised you mentioned it. Huh? Obviously, one of us has become demented. What are you planning? I'm planning to eat my meal when it arrives. Sorry to keep you waiting, gentlemen. Feast your eyes and your palate. Ah, perfection. Ah, we'll be ruined. Please, my friend, you mustn't be so dispirited in the face of such marvelous food. To begin with, it's bad for your health, and beyond that, it's terribly impolite. So drink up, and leave everything to me. I'm drinking, I'm drinking, but I'm still worried. Believe me, there's nothing to be afraid of. Humba, we'll end up in prison. Mm. Wonderful. Ah, last My masterpiece. This gentleman is the special dish for which.
which my restaurant is so famous. Mmm, it smells delicious. What do you have there, small chickens? I should say not. These are quails, which we caught in the forest this morning. Quails? Take my word for it, these birds are something of a delicacy because they're so difficult to catch. Why, I've heard that the king himself has been unable to find them, and believe me, his majesty loves his quails. Mm. Get me some quails, you fool! I've been saying for weeks that I want to eat a dish of plump quails, and you can't provide me with a single one. I'm certain we'll find some tomorrow. That's the same thing you said yesterday. The very mention of quails sets my stomach to rumbling and my mouth to watering with anticipation. There might be some in my kingdom. Is there nobody smart enough to find them? My compliments. This is the best meal I've eaten in quite some time. I thank you, sir. The quail is particularly fine, don't you think? I'm not surprised the king finds it so appetizing. More than appetizing, sir. It's his favorite dish. Hmm. You're absolutely certain it's his favorite? Oh, yes, sir. I have it on the highest authority. Excuse me? How peculiar. I presume he'll be coming back shortly to pay for both your meals? Uh... The miller's cat had been struck by a brilliant idea and immediately set about to put his plan into motion. Borrowing a sack and a little wheat from the innkeeper, he excused himself and raced away into the forest in search of quail. The miller's son, meanwhile, was left behind to face the wrath of the innkeeper should the cat fail to return. It was an uncomfortable situation and did little to improve his appetite. <laughs> I suppose it's sheer folly to expect anyone to help me with my burden. Far easier to stand around and watch people work than to offer them assistance. Hold on just a moment. Hey, guard! By what right do you presume to stop me and damage my parcel like this? I have a good mind to complain to your superior. I'll pass your message along. In the meantime, since you have no business being here, I suggest you turn and be gone. I doubt if you even know where you are. It's the king's castle, of course. You expected to walk up and demand admittance? Absolutely. For what reason? To present something to His Majesty. I have something very important to discuss with him and have therefore brought him a special gift. Mm -hmm. 
Now, having explained myself, would you mind opening the gate? My time is somewhat limited. <laughs> Tell me what you find so humorous. You have something important to discuss with the king personally? <laughs> On top of that, would we mind opening the gate since you had to be somewhere? <laughs> I am not in the habit of making frivolous requests. Do you really find my statements to be that funny? Yes, I find them to be very funny. And now I'm going to show you something I find even more amusing. <laughs> there now, that was pretty funny, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid your special gift to the king has fallen over the bridge. Mind that you don't fall over the edge yourself, Master Cat. You might end up like your bag. It's apparent you have no curiosity about the contents of that bag, do you? I couldn't be less interested. And I feel the same. That's unfortunate. In short order, I predict you both will change your attitude. Just where might you be going? I'm going to see the king to report on what has just happened. Truly, and what do you intend to tell him? I'll explain that I was attempting to deliver a gift of His Majesty's favorite food, a bag of fresh quail. What was that? I'll further relate that his gate sentries committed the unbelievable act of throwing them off the bridge into the valley below. You mean you had quails there inside that beat-up old bag? As many as 30 quails, actually, all of them quite plump and ready to cook. Since it's been some time since His Majesty has been able to partake of his favorite dish, I'm sure he would become most upset upon hearing about the loss of such a collection of quality birds. Then, I suppose, just as you threw the quails over the bridge, you too would be thrown over the bridge as well. No! Calm down here! You're lying about the contents of that bag. We'll soon find out whether or not I'm telling the truth. If the king even suspects that his beloved quail are lying at the bottom of the valley, he is certain to become aroused. I should think his next step would be to send someone down to retrieve that bag. And if I am found to be lying, I shall be put in prison. If the bag does contain quails, however, you two are in great peril. Say, have mercy, Master Cat. Were there quails inside that old bag? You've become curious? If you're so worried, wouldn't it be a good idea to climb down and look? After all, my friends, your lives do depend upon it. Just tell me if there were quails inside that bag or not. It's possible. What? Am I mistaken? I thought you said you couldn't be less interested. You scoundrel! Well, goodbye for now. I'm off to speak to the king. Just a moment, please! I've changed my mind about that sack, good sir. I'm willing to go down and get it for you. Just don't leave yet! Get going! Now! Both of you bring it up! Yes, sir! Get down there before I lose my patience! Quickly! Quickly! You're much too slow! I can't wait around here all day! Oh! Oh! Hey. Like, who's responsible for this wonderful gift? I am, Your Majesty. That's my soul. There must be more than 20 quail in there. How marvelous, and they feel particularly plump. Forgive me, sir, but your face is unfamiliar to me. I wonder if you might be in the service of some well-known family. I am the messenger of Count Friedrich Sauerkraut von Heineken, Your Majesty, and the Count has ordered me to convey the immeasurable happiness he feels at having the opportunity to grace the royal table with this special gift. Should you find these quails to your liking, he will be most gratified. Mm. Your master has left the most favorable impression. Bring me my cook. In response, then, would you convey to your master my earnest gratitude for his benevolence? You are most kind, Your Majesty. When I make your words known to the Count, I am sure he will be filled with emotion and will once again order me to appear at the castle to present you with yet more quail. Mmm. Remarkable. I am most overjoyed. Please express my appreciation to your master in advance. Where is that confounded cook? Fire up the kettles. You've been of great assistance, sir. We'll make it a point to come back again someday. You can be assured that I'll be looking forward to that visit. Good fortune to you, Master Cat. Thanks to you, I have not only been able to eat enough to fill myself up for the first time in my life, but I have also been able to make some money in the bargain. You constantly astound me. You seem to be in some difficulty. Would a carriage be helpful? Uh, no, thank you. It would be a waste to squander our money on such a luxury. Don't worry about the expense, my friend. In fact, we'll have to spend most of the money before long just to prepare you to assume your new role as a rich nobleman. What nobleman? His Majesty was curious about the identity of his benefactor, and in order to preserve appearances, I explained to him that you were the Count von Heineken. Wait! Let me be sure I understand you properly. You described me to the king as the Count von something or other? His Majesty wanted to thank you for the quails and suggested I present you to him at the earliest opportunity. 
No, you must have taken leave of your senses. I can't do something like that. If I was to deceive the king, I could be beheaded. Don't panic. I have a plan. Please leave everything to me. I'm supposed to leave everything to you? What madness is this? I'm the youngest son of a poor miller. If I stood on my head, I still wouldn't appear to be a cow. You'll just have to try. I've sworn an oath to the king. What? There was very little choice. He wouldn't let me leave until I promised to bring you to the castle so he could thank you in person. I'll surely end up in prison. What could be worse? He asked for more quail. Ah! The cat had a difficult time convincing Max to go along with his plan. Will you stop pushing? I don't want to go. Now don't worry, just leave it to me. I've learned a bitter lesson leaving things to you. It's a surefire way of landing myself in serious trouble. The king has been saying how much he wants to meet you, my friend. If you were to miss this opportunity for a successful future, surely you would be very, very sorry. Oh! But how can I pretend to be a count when I'm dressed like this? He'll see through me in a moment and he'd probably want to have me beheaded on the spot. Do you actually think that I could make such an obvious mistake as that? I've ordered an entire wardrobe of beautiful new clothes for you from the town tailor, and they'll be finished today. What about my lack of education? I don't know all those fancy words that royalty uses. Trust me, please. It's going to be all right. All you have to do is remember the new name I gave you. Remember what? Your new name. What is my new name? Pay attention now. Count Friedrich Sauerkraut von Heineken. That is your new name. How will I remember? Must it be so very long? Look, why don't we just forget the whole thing? I'm not that interested in meeting the king and having a successful career. The simple fact of the matter is that I'm more than satisfied with the money that you have received and brought back from the king. Hmm? Huh? That carriage looks familiar. <laughs> why, that is the carriage of the king. What? This is something of a surprise. I wonder what he's doing away from the castle. Uh... I remember now. The princess, the monarch's darling young daughter, has been begging her father to take her for a ride and spend the day on an outing with her alone. Just our luck. He must have chosen this to be the day. Meaning there is no point in going to the castle because the king won't be there. Hmm. I fear I have failed you. I appreciate the failure. <laughs> a big fuss over nothing. I am so relieved. Even when I think about meeting the king, I get giant butterflies in my stomach. I'm sure that if he spoke to me, my eyes would go blurry and I would definitely faint. My feeling is that today, I nearly lost my head. Look, the king's carriage is coming this way. I'm going to hide while I still can. This poses a problem. He's practically upon us. What are we going to do about it? Don't panic, I'm thinking. The trouble is, you're not dressed to look like a count. Oh, I smell real trouble. Oh, don't be so negative. As a veteran problem solver, it has been my experience that where there is a will, there is definitely a way, my good fellow. I'm leaving now. Come back here. If you leave now, you'll spoil all the plans I've made for you. If you want to move ahead in this world, you have to face up to its challenges. Buck up. There is nothing to fear. I know it looks hopeless, but remember, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I hate you. I'm getting away from you forever. Don't come near me. Don't speak. From this day forward, I don't know you. You put me up. You put me up on purpose. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. It's all a part of my plan. Huh? Is that not the tail of the master cat with the long boots? He's stopping just as I hoped he would. Ah. ah, hello, your majesty. A terrible thing has happened here. I regret that you are a witness to this incident, noble sire. What happened to you? It appears you were bathing with a friend. The plan is working. His majesty is reacting just as I foresaw. <gasps> the reason my companion is hiding is because he's embarrassed, sire. You see, it's like this. That young man sitting in the water is none other than my very own master, Count Friedrich Sauerkraut von Heineken. <gasps> Oh, Count von Heineken, the generous nobleman who sent me those delicious gifts through your own good offices, Master Cat. I wish to meet him. I'm afraid that's a bit embarrassing. Why is the Count embarrassed? Well, because he's naked, Your Majesty. Oh, huh? you mean... Completely. He was set upon by robbers and they stole all of his clothes. Robbers? Yes. And to make matters even worse, the Count had filled his carriage to the bursting with expensive presents, for he had planned to request an audience this very morning with you, sire. And that's not all. Those presents included gifts for the princess, necklaces and bracelets and rings. But just when he arrived at this spot here, well, sire... At that moment, the robbers stripped him of everything? Yes. 
He bravely drew out his sword and tried to do battle with them, but of course he was outnumbered. By the time I arrived, he was, as you say, stripped of everything. There is one way that I can help. Yeoman. Yes, sire? Return to the castle and fetch the Count some suitable clothes before he catches his death of cold. And be sure to tell the royal tailor to choose the very best clothes. Yes, sire. Everything is going even better than I hoped. You just have to be patient, Max. You, how Quiet. could you? I'll strangle you to death. Obviously, you've gained the King's sympathy. I wouldn't be surprised if he invited us to join him and the Princess on their outing. There is no way I would do it. I would rather sit here and freeze to death of pneumonia, Master. Now stop whining. With any luck at all, the Princess might take a liking to you, and then your fortune would be made. <laughs> Take my word for it, you look like a splendid gentleman. Be sure to say a gracious thank you to the king. That shaky voice will hide your true identity. Perfect. I'm not a bit surprised. I, I wish... I wish to... It's true. I, I want to... to it's true. I'll translate for the count, your majesty. Due to the ice-cold water of the river, both his mouth and tongue have frozen up. What he was attempting to convey was to thank your majesty for your generosity and express his deep regret over his inability to speak for himself. It is truly I who am the regretful one. I feel it is I who is indirectly the cause of it. No, 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 no. I wish to make amends for the grievous harm I have inadvertently brought upon you. What can I do? Sire, the Count says you are in no way to blame. There was nothing you could do to prevent this crime. He has the exquisite manners of a true gentleman. I am sure that we can make room for two more here in the carriage. Mm. <laughs> Daughter, next to yourself, make a seat for the Count. I would be happy to make room for such a hero, Father. There you are. Time aboard, Count. <laughs> the Count is reluctant to impose upon Your Majesty's generosity, but under the circumstances, he has very little choice. But, 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 I'll translate. Uh, uh, Count Friedrich Sauerkraut von Heineken is happy to accept Your Majesty's gracious offer. Your Majesty, I... I, I uh, this way, Count. I, I, here we go. Is it far from here, the Count's mansion? I would very much like to know. Sire? I said the Count's mansion. Where is it located? Um, you want to know where the Count's mansion is? Is that it? Of course. Just lead the way. I don't understand. I will take the Count back to his mansion, so just lead the way there. Oh, uh, well, the Count was under the impression that you planned to devote this day to the Princess. Yes, you're right. But there's been a change in my plan. That is to say, a change in our plan. For the Princess and I have decided to take the Count back to the mansion instead. The princess has the opinion that a mansion belonging to the Count must certainly be a splendid one, and she looks forward to seeing it. So it's settled. Climb aboard and we'll be on our way. Enter the carriage. <laughs> hmm. Oh dear, what happened to him? It's nothing for you to be concerned about, sire. The reason the Count fainted was he couldn't believe his good luck, for he wanted so much for you to visit his castle. He was so overcome with joy, he simply fell unconscious. All at once, followed from one of the king's men, Master Cat galloped as fast as the steed would go. Before long, he had put a safe distance between himself and the king's carriage. Truly, he went off in a great hurry. He must be miles ahead. Very strange. He probably wants to get back to the Count's castle ahead of us, mm -hmm. to prepare a warm welcome fit for a king and a princess. Oh my. He is a very clever cat. I must say that you are the owner of a most enviable servant. I'm just lucky, I guess. As far as Max is concerned, the royal carriage was his cage, and he was a hapless bird whose doom was at hand. The cat's mission was to find the non-existent mansion of the Count. I know curiosity killed the cat, but may I ask you a question? Yes, what is it? Where are we going in such a terrible hurry? <laughs> I only wish I knew. You don't know? I just want to put as much distance as possible between us and the king's carriage. Well, from the way you handled those reins, I can tell you're not an experienced rider. I'm tired. Sorry about that, horse. I guess there's no reason to be in such a hurry, especially when I have no idea where we're going yet. Without a destination, it doesn't make any difference what road we take, so I suggest we go no further on this one. Oh, why don't you want to continue on this road? Why? Uh, because of that horrible stench in the air? Yes, I wonder what on earth that odor is. I see the peasants are reaping, not sowing, so it couldn't be fertilizer. There must be an evil spirit living close by. 
Human beings can't smell it because their noses are not nearly as sensitive as those of us in the animal kingdom, but my horse sense tells me that you and I are drawing ever closer to the source of that smell. Good day to you, farm workers. I admire your diligence, and I must say, as wheat fields go, these are particularly splendid. Goodness, they certainly do stretch far and wide, don't they? Can I inquire of you as to who the owner of these fields might be? These fields all belong to the great sorcerer. Ooh. What? These people are all under the sorcerer's power and serve him. And unless I miss my guess, his castle has got to be somewhere very near here. Look, there it is up there. It's a very beautiful castle, isn't it? Most impressive. Hmm. Attention! I'm about to make a very important announcement. Shortly, the carriage of the king will make its passage through here, and at that time, if the king happens to ask whose wheat fields these are, you are to reply that they belong to Count Friedrich Sauerkraut von Heineken. I wonder who that unusual creature is. First cat I've ever seen wear long boots. I'm giving you these orders in the name of the sorcerer, and if you don't follow my instructions exactly, you'll risk being eaten alive. Do you understand me? All right, let's get out of here. You're crazy. To the castle. All right, but you're the one who's going to get eaten alive by the evil sorcerer. There's more than one way to skin a sorcerer. <laughs> to the castle, giddy up. I wonder if he was really sent here by the sorcerer. I don't know, but I'm not taking any chances on being eaten alive. Master Cat and his trusty steed race toward the castle, and the king and his entourage arrived at the golden fields of wheat. Mm, these are rather splendid wheat fields. I wonder to whom they belong. I don't know, Father, but perhaps Count von Heineken knows whose property they huh? are. No, no, Your Majesty. I don't know anything at all about them, really. <laughs> Rather than asking the Count, it might be wiser to ask the people who work here. Sir, would you mind telling me who owns these wheat fields? Your Highness, all that you see is the property of the Count. Huh? Are you out of your mind? I speak the truth, I swear it. As far as the eye can see, every square mile is the property of the Count. Huh? <laughs> I must say, it amuses me. Really, his own wheat fields and a peasant has to tell him. Probably it's because the Count has so much property that it's impossible to remember the full extent of his holdings, Father. His paw prints are all over this. Somehow he managed to do it to me again. What am I going to do? The horse refused to continue further, leaving the master cat on foot. With determined strides, he approached the castle. Inside, the sorcerer snatched a flame from the fire. He held it in his hands, released it, and the flame became a beautiful dancing girl. <laughs> the door is open. Who are you? And what do you want? I am merely a simple cat, great sorcerer, here to humble myself before your magnificence. And if I may be so bold, mighty one, I have a small request to beg of you. Yes, what is it? I have seen all sorts of magic performed by a great many magicians, but I have yet to see sorcery so frightening that my very body and soul become paralyzed. I have traveled a great distance, for I have heard that you are the only one in the world capable of such sorcery. Are you aware of what my fees are? The price of witnessing such sorcery could cost you each and every one of your nine lives. Naturally, I value all my nine lives, sorcerer, but I must see it whatever the cost. I believe you mean what you say. You really would give up your nine lives, wouldn't you? <gasps> Does that mean I will be allowed to see such sorcery that will make my hair stand on end? My sorcery in exchange for your life. And you will keep your solemn word if you know what's good for you. Of course, sir. After all, my word is my bond, as they say. All I ask is that you show me something that will make me faint. Uh, that's very clever, but not really terrifying. I sense a certain disrespect for my sorcery. No, it's just that I expected something more. <laughs> Nine lives must be worth a bit more than that. I can read your true thoughts in your sneaky eyes. You have no intention of keeping your bargain. As you can see, I can change forms right in front of you. What do you think I resemble now? If I'm not mistaken, you look a great deal like the king of the jungle. I am the king of the jungle, a real live lion with a mouthful of sharp lion's teeth. Just look at these. Uh, very impressive, sir, but I have seen other magicians do just as well. And now I'm going to have you for my supper. Oh, please, Magnificent One, let's not be hasty. It's no great achievement for a large lion to eat one small cat. Are you telling me that this is the full extent of your powers? I mean, after all... Is this what you call sorcery? Well, I don't. It's beneath you. All right, I confess that's pretty good. 
good, mighty one. Very good, in fact. Yeah, all right, I'm impressed with your powers, I admit it. The time has come for you to pay. Prepare to give up all nine lives, little cat. Oh, please, let me keep just one. Wait a minute! Obviously, your reputation is well deserved. You are truly the greatest sorcerer in the world. I confess that you have succeeded in paralyzing me with fear, almighty sorcerer. Ooh. If you think your words will make me pity you, you are very much mistaken. He who owes must pay. Oh, to come here at all was foolish. I don't know whether you're more frightening as a lion or in your natural form as a sorcerer. Either way, you scare the boots off me. I'm a cat condemned to death, and when you're a cat condemned to death, you're supposed to be granted one last wish. You have proved your ability to turn yourself into a huge and frightening beast, but are you able to do the opposite and turn yourself into something very small as well? That's my last request. You really were impressed by my magic, weren't you? Perhaps I will grant your wish. In all humility, it would make me a happy cat if I knew that this was the last thing I was going to see in my entire life. Now that's not asking too much, is it? Hardly an outrageous request, it seems to me. Huh? Huh? Uh... Where are you? Where are you hiding, sorcerer? I'm right down here. Hmm? How could something that was so huge and ferocious become so teeny-weeny? It's easy. No, you mean that you're a rodent? Now I guess I've seen just about everything. No, you can't be that little mouse. It's me, all right. I could become even smaller if you want. I could become a little bug or even as tiny as a flea. So it really is you? No, if you were to become any smaller, then I wouldn't be able to see you. Please do stay as you are. I rather like you this way. There's a game called Cat and Mouse that's one of my old favorites, and I'd very much like to play it with you. I still can't get over the fact that you and the lion are one and the same. You may be tired of hearing me say it, but you really are the greatest sorcerer in the whole world. And just think, if I hadn't been looking for a castle that I could pretend belonged to the so-called Count, why then probably you and I would never have met. When I think of what I would have missed not meeting the greatest sorcerer in the whole world... Your eyes! Oh, my powers are nothing compared to yours and nothing to worry about. I'm just practicing the look we cats use when we play cat and mouse. Yeah. Your eyes are paralyzing. And when you're paralyzed, you cannot return to your original form, can you? Remember when you were the lion and said you were going to eat me alive? I didn't mean it, really. Let me return to my body, please. Oh, please, let me go. Oh, no. No, Mr. Cat, please put me down. Right down my gullet. Not even the world's greatest sorcerer can beat a smart cat at his own game. No. And so the cat rid the land of the evil sorcerer once and for all. The spell was lifted from the castle. And it again became the beautiful place it had been before. A castle suitable for a count and certain to impress the game. I don't believe it. He's actually found me a castle. Ahoy! I'm glad to see you made it home. Ahoy! We're here! My sincere congratulations! For a job well done! Max's friendship with the princess blossomed into love, and they were married. For his cunning and wisdom, the king made Puss in Boots his prime minister. Forevermore, the people of the realm would tell stories and sing songs in praise of their beloved Puss in Boots.